Christian psychics. What? I'm sorry, what? Yeah, I'm like you. I'm not buying it. There's no such thing as a Christian psychic. But when I was serving as editor of Charisma Magazine, I received an email from a publicist who aggressively claimed to represent a devout, lifelong Christian who is also a clairvoyant, empathetic psychic medium and psychic investigator with consultation on more than 100 missing person and cold file cases on his resume. Hogwash. This is what we have come to, where people blend and mix together clairvoyance with prophecy. This is a demonic mixture. People can't tell anymore the difference between a psychic and a prophet. I mean, imagine the bravado, the boldness to contact me, the editor of one of the largest Christian magazines in the world at the time, and begin to pitch this as if I have no discernment at all. But here's the thing. Many Christians don't have any discernment at all. And they're so hungry for prophetic intelligence that they'll tap into demonic realms to get it. This is Jennifer LeClaire, Senior Leader of the Awakening House of Prayer Global Movement. Come check out my church in Fort Lauderdale where you'll encounter the real true living God. You can watch our services online at ahop.online. Please take a moment to subscribe wherever you're watching me right now. Subscribe. Make sure you have the alerts set so that you can get part two of this because we're going to rip the cover off these Christian psychics quote unquote, there's no such thing. These Christian witches, quote unquote, there's no such thing. These Christian mediums, these warlocks were ripping off the mask and you're going to learn how to discern a thing. Seriously, don't be so hungry for a word that you throw your discernment out the window. So this man who this publicist was representing, he claimed to be communicating with people who died and using his gifts to help authorities solve the unsolvable cases where tracks had run cold. First of all, talking to the dead is called necromancy. We're forbidden to do it in scripture, just in case you didn't know, because there's some people who are claiming prophets who are claiming to talk to dead people even now. Long conversations, getting revelation that they're sharing with you. Please, please, please be careful. This guy calls this his life's work. Pretty creepy. The trouble with this type of prophetic ministry is that it violates scripture. I have no doubt that this guy was talking to spirits. But he's talking to familiar spirits who know everything about the deceased person or enough to pretend as if they are that person, right? They're impersonating the dead person. My goodness. So why these familiar spirits would cooperate in solving crimes, I don't know. What I do know is it's necromancy, which is conjuring of spirits of the dead for purposes of magically revealing the future or influencing the courses of events. It's an abomination to the Lord. And God, you know, he didn't change his mind just because we're in a new covenant. I know we're in the New Testament right? I know the standards for prophets are not the same. I know in the Old Testament, they'd stone the prophet if the prophet missed it because that automatically made them a false prophet. In the New Testament, if we miss it, we don't get stoned. Thank God. Although that would solve a lot of our problems. <laughs> we need to pray for these false prophets. We need to pray for them, that they'd come to the knowledge of the truth. Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 13 says this, when you enter the land which the Lord your God gives you, you must not learn to practice the abominations of those nations. There must not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire or who uses divination or uses witchcraft or an interpreter of omens or a sorcerer, or one who casts out spells, or a spiritualist, or an occultist, or a necromancer. That kind of covers the whole shebang, doesn't it? For all these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God will drive them out before you. You must be blameless before the Lord. Now, this is crystal clear. Crystal clear. So this Christian psychic, again, 
don't don't read me wrong here. There's there's no such thing as a Christian psychic. Seriously, the two don't mix. It's oil and water, man. It doesn't mix. It does not mix. That's the problem with some camps in the modern day prophetic movement. There's a mixture. It's a little bit of God, a little bit of flesh, a little bit of demons. In other words, they might start off hearing from God, but then they get in the flesh and they can't tell the voice of God from the voice of the demon because they're so used to listening to the demons because their motives are not pure. So that's where the mixture comes in. Many times is with unpure motives. That's where the mixture comes in. Many times is through the, 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 the quest, the striving to be famous, to make money, to be known. We are here to make the name of Jesus famous. So this Christian psychic's publicist claims that he kept, you know, these psychic gifts in a closet. He said this. He said he kept his psychic gifts in a closet for fear of being ostracized by his Christian community. Uh, yeah. Well, what do you expect for us to do? Embrace a false prophet who calls himself a Christian psychic? He counts pastors, Christian authors, and other strict religious devotees as part of his beloved family, and he insists that he's a devout believer. God gave me this gift, he said. I didn't create it on my own, he says, and he's speaking of his psych psychic calling. Now, he may have been called, but a psychic and a prophet are not the same thing. Of course, he says he's accustomed to Christian leaders disagreeing with them. But he's quick to answer that a Christian's job is to love, accept, and preach to all people, not just those who suit the conventional paradigm. This is not about a conventional paradigm. It's not about wearing a suit and a tie, a hat and gloves. It's not about that. It's about the word of God. Christians and psychics, they don't mix. Prophets and psychics, they don't mix. He said this, he said, I take the basic information that I can pick up on the person and begin to see pictures, places, and things visually in my mind. Go, go, going online to Google Maps and Google Earth helps me put a visual frame to work at what I'm getting in my mind's eye. I can look at an arena, pick up clues, and assist in that way. This is a tragic deception. Listen, this is a big issue. I talk about this more in my book, Discerning Prophetic Witchcraft. We have this thing on our website, globalpropheticcenter.com, Ask a Prophet. And on that website, it says very clearly, listen, if you have a question about prophetic ministry, if a question about prophetic ministry, leave the question, we'll answer it. Do you know that no one asks about prophetic ministry? A question about prophetic ministry, such as what's the purpose of a prophet? Um, you know, are there prophets today? Um, how do you flow the prophetic anointing? Questions about the prophetic ministry. Do you know that we, we're having to shut that down now because we have so many people, Christians, mind you, Christians, who ask questions such as, will I have a baby next year? Will I be a millionaire by the time I'm 30? This is not a magic eight ball ministry here. It's not a magic eight ball. And that's because Christians, many Christians can't discern the difference between a psychic and a prophet. And part of the reason why is because prophets have allowed themselves to be used and abused and spit out prophecy on demand. And therefore, people have come to see not much difference between the two. We have to be discerning in this hour. Jesus said in the last days, false prophets would rise up and deceive many. And that's what's happening. It's happening before our very eyes. It's a tragic deception. And we must be very careful that we don't fall into it. Let me give you a little tip. If you read your word, God will speak. You don't need a prophet to prophesy into your life. You need to cultivate a relationship with God. You need to test the spirits to see if they are of God. You need to cry out and ask the Holy Spirit to open the eyes of your understanding. You need to be a student of the word, able to rightly divide the word of truth. You need to get equipped to understand the differences between a psychic and a prophet. A psychic is getting their information from the dark realm. It may or may not be true. A prophet is supposed to be getting his or her information from the throne room, not the second heaven, not familiar spirits, not monitoring spirits, divination, none of that. And so I want to encourage you, pick up a copy of my book, Discerning Prophetic Witchcraft, if that's going to help you. But psychic readings are not prophecy. Psychic readings are not prophecy. It's a tragic deception. The Bible tells us 
to test the spirits and we must test the spirits. Christians are not supposed to turn to psychics or prophets to get in touch with dead loved ones. Prophets are not supposed to get prophetic words from any other source but God. Yet in this hour, we're seeing these, these, these troubling trends rise up in the prophetic ministry. And this should not be any surprise because Paul said in 2 Timothy 3.13, but evil men and seducers will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So I could go on and on, but I'm going to stop there because I want to pray for your discernment. Remember, please like this, share it. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel, please. So you can get part two of this because I want to dive deeper. And remember to check out the book, Discerning Prophetic Witchcraft. Let me pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, sharpen the discernment of your people, please. Lord Jesus, please help us to discern between true and false, right and wrong, crooked and straight, evil and good. Lord, help us, Lord, not to be deceived by flash by glamour, by charisma, but help us, Lord, to be led forth by your truth, to discern the truth, to be a lover of the truth in the name of Jesus. I bless all those under the sound of my voice, and I thank you for their lives and their discernment in Jesus' name. Amen. Make sure you subscribe for part two. God bless you.